In this video, we're going to create something called a swipeable edge. Swipeable edge is an element that allows you to kind of drag upwards that will then show some specific content. And this is most well known from, for example, Google Maps. So you'll be able to do this with a drag interaction as well as a click interaction. And then, of course, you'll also be able to close it by dragging and clicking. And as always, if you'd like to save time and reuse this element in your own projects, make sure to check the link in the description that will take you to my store. And now let's get started with building this in Figma. The first thing we need to do is actually create a frame. And I'm going to do that by pressing F on my keyboard. I created the first one on accident. So F on my keyboard and then under phone, uh, in this dialog on the right side, I'm gonna go for iPhone 13 or 13 Pro. This will create a frame that I will name App Wireframe. Then I'm gonna do something similar. I'm gonna duplicate this, but in this case, this is gonna be actually our swipeable edge. So I'm gonna name this swipeable edge. This swipeable edge will not be as tall as this frame which means I'm gonna reduce this to about 500, something like that. So let's just type in 500. And I'm gonna also round the top corners, which means going over here, clicking this icon, and then adjusting these values. You can see that this icon determines which corner you are currently adjusting. Uh, so this is the top left one. I'm gonna set that to 24 and then the top right one that will be 24 as well. The swipeable edge is gonna have a small handle that will be eight pixels tall. It's gonna have rounded corners and it's gonna be constrained to the center and top. Uh, not that it really matters right now because we won't be scaling this frame, uh, but it's when you're building stuff, it's good to uh, think about potential changes along with potential scaling and that means also setting up elements in such a way that you get the behavior that you want in case you change the current circumstances. We're gonna keep this one very light, um, so about this should do, and then I'm gonna use the text tool to create a swipeable edge content. This is gonna be Demibold, for example, 24 pixels, gonna be right here. Also gonna keep these constraints to the top and left with some padding from the left side. Let's just say 32. And of course, I'm gonna add some content. Um, there's not gonna be anything really. So um, I'll just create a gray rectangle that will also have 32 pixels from each side and constrain to left and right and top. So let's just pretend this is our swipeable edge content. Uh, it's gonna have spacing of 16 from the headline. And now we're gonna press Command Option G to create a new frame around this swipeable edge. And this frame is gonna be called swipeable edge container. This swipeable edge is gonna be constrained to center and bottom, right? The swipeable edge within the swipeable edge container. And the swipeable edge container is gonna be as tall as this app wireframe, which means 844 pixels, right? You can see that when we scale this, um, the swipeable edge content is automatically moving along with the with the bottom side. Now we're gonna select the swipeable edge container and go over here to turn this to a component. I'll then select the swipeable edge frame and move that downwards and also make sure the swipeable edge container has clip content enabled. And then I'm just gonna position that to um, position that I feel like works, right? So it could be like 700 pixels from the top or even more, I think. Yeah, something like that. Then I'm gonna select this swipeable edge container and press this plus icon on the top bar to create another variant. I'm just gonna place these next to each other instead of beneath each other. This state is, is of course gonna be that state where the swipeable edge is open, visible. It's visible in its full, to, to its fullest extent. Now that I think about it, we should actually turn this swipeable edge into a component as well. So I'm just gonna do this very quickly. I'm gonna move this outside, turn this to a component, Alt and click and drag to place that inside this variant too, and also do the same here. Right, so this swipeable edge container contains a swipeable edge component 
which is here. This means that we can now easily change, for example, the color of this headline, right? So if, if we update this over here, it's gonna update everywhere. We don't want that for now, but it's possible that we might, and you're gonna be ready for that. And with this second state, first of all, I'm gonna name this to open, and then um, this one's gonna be closed, which means that we now have a property called property one with states or values closed and open, but we want to name this uh, property uh, state. And then we also would like to see some kind of um, color overlay uh, type of thing where you get a slight darkening of the background behind this swappable edge. So I'm going to add a fill right here then turn that to black and reduce the opacity to 30. Yeah, I will also create some content for the app wireframe, which means app wireframe. This will be a large headline. So I'm gonna make this 40 pixels and just keep that 32 pixels from the left to correspond with uh, this padding right here, right? It will definitely look better. Um, maybe we're gonna create a subheadline, right? Where we're gonna say, um, this is a prototype, prototype where we showcase a UI element called swipeable edge. I'm gonna adjust the width of this text. Also keep that at 32 from the size and Move it over here, make it gray, and then also selecting the rectangle from component and pasting it over here so that we don't have to create a new one. Move that like this or all the way to about here and then create another one with a new headline. We'll say you can scroll or just say scrollable app, gonna be 32 pixels. What we want to create here is the ability to scroll down uh, within this uh, app, let's say, and we even might want to create another copy of this and just move that all the way over here, right? So this might look like it's not actually inside the frame, but it is, right? If you move the frame, you move all of this and you can actually see that this is this rectangle, for example, is within uh, this frame. If we clip content, all of this gets hidden. So it's definitely, all of this content is definitely inside this app wireframe. And right now I'm realizing that we might not be able to scroll when the swipeable edge is open. So we might have to find another workaround for that. But let's, for now, just let's start preparing the interaction within this swipeable edge and we're gonna do that by first selecting this swipeable edge instance within this uh, variant. Go to prototype and then select this object and connect that to the second variant, right? And we're gonna say on drag, change to state open. And we're gonna say that this is gonna be smart animate. Let's keep that at ease out and 300 milliseconds. But um, not only do we want to be able to open this swipeable edge by swiping upwards, but also by clicking it, which means we're gonna add another interaction that will this time be on tab, change to state open, right? Also smart animate, also ease out 300 milliseconds. And let's just test what, ha what happens. I think this is not gonna work specifically the way we want, especially with the scrolling. But let's just test what happens now and uh, use that to um, to move this prototype further. I'm gonna, I used an instance of this swipeable edge container and then I'm just gonna put that right here. And also to differentiate this swipeable edge from the background, I'm gonna select the swipeable edge instance within this component and add a shadow. So it's gonna be drop shadow it's gonna be very blurry and it's gonna be have low opacity but as you can see this will create an effect where you can now you can now easily differentiate where the swipeable edge actually begins so right now when I hide this effect it kind of blends in which you don't want that and I'm gonna also copy this effect so selecting this effect and then I'm going to copy it here just so that we can keep a, a visual consistency. So let's let's uh, let's see what happens now. So this is what we get right now. We get a wireframe with a swipeable edge that uh, we can click on to pop this up and also we can drag this 
to open this, you know, like this. And we also get a nice little overlay over the background. But the problem is we cannot scroll through this app wireframe. Why is that? Well, we have to enable something called vertical scrolling over here in the app wireframe. So this extends downwards and we have to enable vertical scrolling to keep this, you know, moving. So this is what happens now, right? We can scroll through the app, but there's another problem and that is our swipeable edge is not staying in one place. And we also have to fix that by going again over here to design or actually, uh, yeah, design, then clicking on the swipeable edge container and then click fix position when scrolling. We'll also constrain this to the bottom and let's see what happens now, right? So you can see that we can now scroll through the app, right? We get probable app headline, another headline headline, and you get this fictional, these um, placeholders for content and the swipeable edge is staying in one place. And along with the scrolling, we can also click and drag to pop this up like this. You get, you can see that we get some kind of buggy interaction. I'm not sure we can do anything about that, but uh, this works, right? And when I click it, it also works. And I can scroll through the app with this being in one place. What is missing at this point? That would be being able to actually close this um, swipeable edge, right? So what we're gonna do is go over here to the swipeable edge container component, and then I will set over here in prototype so that when I, I select this whole variant, and then I connect that to the first variant and I'm going to say on tab, change to state close, smart animate. And we should be able to close this only by clicking here, but not here. Let's see if that's the case. And as you can see, it isn't the case. So let's try and again, find a workaround, which means I'm going to create a rectangle with the dimensions 390 and 844. So 390, 844, the same size as the whole frame. I'm gonna set this to black and with the same opacity as the fill of this frame, that's gonna be 20. I'm essentially gonna replace the overlay of the whole frame with this singular rectangle. I need to, I need to actually click and drag this inside this variant. I'm gonna center this, move that behind the swipeable edge and then remove this fill. I'm gonna just remove this, right? So what we get right now, um, I'm gonna rename this background and what we get right now is a rectangle behind this swipeable edge. And now I'm gonna connect only this rectangle to lead to the first variant, the state closed, right? So we get an interaction on this whole variant. We don't want that. We're going to remove this. We just want to keep this interaction only on the background rectangle. Let's test this out if this works the way we intend it. So when I click this background now, it closes, but I don't want to click this content and close that as well. Let's see if that works. It still doesn't, so that means we probably have to make this rectangle smaller. See, you just you just you just have to keep searching for workarounds. That's that's the whole deal about design. You just have to keep looking for workarounds. So now it should work, right? So you can see that when I click the swipeable edge right now, I don't close it, but when I click over here, it does close. But you can see that we again get this behavior where the transition is not um, as smooth because the rectangle keeps appearing mid transition. And we can fix that by, again, selecting this rectangle, copying that and pasting that within the first variant and then extending this all the way to the bottom, moving that to the background and setting the fail to zero. And also I'm gonna remove the interaction from this element, which means that right now, you can see that when we do this, the rectangle keeps slowly appearing, but it starts at the full height, which now means that you don't get this um, edge of the rectangle right here. And that's exactly what we need. I would also like to be able to swipe or click and drag this um, swipeable edge and kind of drag it downwards again 
to revert back to the initial state. So I'm going to say on drag, change to state closed from this wipeable edge to this wipeable edge, right? Let's test this out. So as you can see, it works. Uh, we get this interaction where, where I can drag this up, I can drag this down, I can click this and then click this and it looks overall very smooth. But there is again one last problem and that is when I scroll downwards like this, you can see that when I click this swipeable edge or when I interact uh, with this in any way, it acts very weird. I think the reason is that Figma doesn't like this swipeable edge kind of having this fixed position when scrolling interaction, right? So you have to remember there is always a workaround and we're gonna find one. So this means what, what I think we, should, we could do is um, let's just remove any scrolling from this main frame and let's just create a subframe where the scrolling will actually take place. And this means that this swipeable edge will no longer be a subject of the fixed position when scrolling interaction, right? And we might be able to remove this weird behavior that we have just seen. So let's try that. I'm gonna duplicate this app wireframe and remove this swipeable edge. I'm gonna remove this. I will set, make sure this is still at vertical scrolling. I will set the app wireframe name to app wireframe scroll, scrollable content, right? And we're gonna remove all the content except for, of course, the swipeable edge from the main frame. I'm gonna remove this. Oops, I removed that one as well. So again, remove this. You can see that we get nothing on this frame except for the swipeable edge. And I'm gonna select this, click on clip content, select this frame disable vertical scrolling, so no scrolling, right? And then I'm gonna copy this or cut this and paste that inside, paste that inside the app wireframe, right? For some reason, it doesn't allow me to paste that here. So I'm just gonna manually have to go here like this. I'm gonna center this. I'm gonna disable fixed position when scrolling. So we should get an app wireframe that contains the swipeable edge container and scrollable content. Let's see if this fixes our problem. And you can see that it actually fixed the problem. So now when I click this swipeable edge, it behaves as intended everywhere, no matter where in the page we currently are, right? So it fixed our bugginess problem. Um, so again, you have to remember there is always a workaround and you just have to keep um, thinking about what possible weaknesses Figma might have and you know try to um, find alternatives. In this case for some reason Figma didn't like uh, this interactive component interaction combined with a scrolling behavior. I don't know why but that's just the way it is. Um, so again the solution is having one extra frame within this app wireframe, um, main frame, right? I keep saying frame, I'm getting kind of lost. But anyway, um, yeah, this is the final result. So this is, this is what you get. Uh, once again, let's, let's go through it again. We get an app wireframe where you can scroll this through. You get uh, some kind of placeholder content. You can uh, click this swipeable edge and keep scrolling um, this app. You can also move that back, click it again. Click here again to close it and you get a nice interaction as intended. If you need to adjust the content of this page, you can uh, go over here to the scrollable contents and just change the headline. For example, you can change color to blue. And if you need to change the, the content of the swipeable edge, you just go here and you can you know, change that, change the content here can see that it automatically updates everywhere, right? So um, this is what you get right now. And that's it. Um, if you found this video useful, I would appreciate you leaving a like and even subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this. And if you'd like to reuse this prototype in your own project, if you'd like to reuse this uh, interactive component, check the link in the description that will take you to my store. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.